Vicky Smiley Morning Show, the most funny in the morning. Just another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God is good all the time. Yes, sir. And all the time, God is good. Pastor Haynes, it's always good to have you this morning. I know you got a good word. How you feeling? Man, I'm feeling great, Ricky Smiley, because our God is awesome. Listen, the good news is I read something earlier that blessed me. I wanted to pass it on to all of us. Pray like the God we pray to can shift reality. I like that. You pray like the God you are praying to is able to do something about what it is you are going through. You pray like the God you are praying to is able to come through when you are going through. And listen, I know that's right because Charles Jenkins sings it so well when he says, our God is awesome. And one of my favorite lines in the song is, he can move mountains. Listen, God Mm. is a mountain mover. And someone has tuned in this morning and there are huge obstacles in your way. There are things that are mountainous in terms of their difficulty. Too much for you, but here's the good news. Since God is awesome and you pray to God, knowing God can shift reality, knowing God can make things happen. Listen, God is a mountain mover. And that lets me know whatever it is you're up against and going through, God is bigger than your problem. God is greater than your mountain. God is able to do something about your mountain. And here's what's so good about it. Not only can God do something about your mountain, but God can give you strength to deal with that mountain. Our God is awesome. And since God is awesome, why don't you move through this day knowing you serve an awesome God? So since God is awesome, why don't you pray awesomely, live awesomely, believe Believe awesomely, knowing that our God is awesome. I know that's right, Pastor Haynes. That's a good word, and I love that song. Pastor Haynes, let everybody know how you can be reached. Hey, thank you, Rick Smiley. I'm on social media, Twitter and Instagram, at FH Unscripted. You can check out some of my sermons on my YouTube channel, Frederick Haynes, and our website, FriendshipWest.org. There it is. All right. Love you, Pastor Haynes. Love you, Ricky. Have a great one, bro. Hey, you too. All right, let's get into some music. God is awesome. Right here, Big Smile awesome. Morning Show. News headlines. Entertainment. Sports. It's the front page on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, y'all, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. 11 minutes after the hour. Got your front page right here. The segment's being brought to you by. Brought to you by Metamucil. If you're feeling sluggish and weighed down, go to Metamucil.com to sign up for the Metamucil two-week challenge. After taking Metamucil psyllium fiber for two weeks, you should feel lighter and more energetic by supporting your regularity. Yes, indeedy. What's up there, Maria? Good morning, Roxy. Good morning, RSMS family. Here's your Thursday morning news. Derek Chauvin's attorney asked a Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, actually, appeals court to toss the murder convictions in the death of George Floyd. Now, his attorney spoke before a three-member panel on Wednesday and argued that extensive pretrial publicity made it impossible for Chauvin to receive a fair trial back in 2021. Even if Chauvin's appeal is granted, he will still be required to serve his federal prison sentence. A Minneapolis defense attorney told the AP winning the appeal would functionally be meaningless. In other news, this has been big. Uh, Brian Walsh was charged in a Massachusetts court with murdering his wife, dismembering her body, and discarding it in dumpsters. His wife, Anna Walsh, wow. a mother, yeah, mother of three, has been missing since New Year's Day. Now, get this, Ricky. The evidence against her husband is said to include a number of Google searches for the best ways to dispose of a body. And he got really specific. A woman's 115-pound <laughs> body. Yeah. So uh, lastly, some Bank of America customers temporarily lost money in their accounts yesterday, apparently due to a technical glitch in electronic payments sent through Zelle. The problem appeared to be at the Bank of America end, and it was resolved by 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time yesterday. Read more on these stories and other headlines at rickysmileymorningshow.com. I'm Maria Moore, and that's a quick look at news. Rock T, what's going on in sports? Yes, Maria, uh, the Dallas Cowboys. We all love the Dallas Cowboys. They signed a new kicker. 
Tristan Viscano to the team. Hey, wait a minute. Hold on now. Super Day, you said they couldn't sign no kicker uh, in the playoff, that they had to stick with the roster. See, now, what's up see, with that? I got to stick with the roster. I, I, He's on the practice I'm squad. getting to this. I'm getting to this, Thank man. You. Oh, y'all, let me, let me up, man. Let me break this, let me Ooh, break boy, this that's down. good news to my I, ears. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Because I told Super Dave during the game that they lucky that they won the game or this kicker would have lost his job. And Super Dave was like, no, you learn something about football. They're not going to lose the kicker's job. Listen, is he kicking he, he's added on the practice squad, okay? When you're, when you're signing a player this late in the season, you got to put him to the practice squad. Now, now that he's officially on the roster of the practice squad, a team has a right to bring him up from the practice squad to add him to the main roster to play a game. So this is just added insurance. Now, Brett Maher, who's a current kicker, who missed four extra points in Monday's wild card game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he's still the main kicker, all right? He's still going to be the main kicker. Now, if he goes out there and misses another extra point, don't be surprised if Tristan Vescano takes over kicking duties in this game versus the San Francisco 49ers coming up this weekend. I'm just saying, all right? It is what it is, man. That's my quick sports support. They call me the sports genius for a reason, and I said this to Super Dave on the podcast. I don't know why they call you that. Let's go. <laughs> Gary, go ahead. Who is they? <laughs> <laughs> I think you call you the sports genius. <laughs> well, baby, let me tell y'all, honey, Beyonce, baby, had everyone ears open, honey, in Dubai ahead of her 24. Listen now, this girl has a $24 million gig this weekend, and they say the fans, honey, got a free show late last night. Now, they're saying a little past midnight over there, the social media users within earshot of Atlantis, the Royal Resort, started documenting Beyonce's song that was blaring out during her sound check. So she was doing her sound check last night, and they say, honey, it was a blast. People were hearing songs and documenting and all that other stuff. They said, honey, she blissed through renditions of her solo hits, Naughty Girl, Halo, Spirit, and Freedom, in addition to Crazy in Love and Drunk in Love, her platinum collabs, honey, with her husband, Jay-Z, that got on stage with the Queen. They said they hope that he shows up. Now, they were saying that Saturday's event going to mark Beyonce's, listen to this, y'all, her first full-length concert in five years, and they said it's going to be a launching pad for her private renaissance tour, which has fans salivating down, honey, for those sold-out tickets. Isn't that a lot of money? They giving that one for twenty four million. That's a lot of money. Twenty four million. Twenty four million. Twenty four million in one night. I'll do twenty four million. That'll be my last show. That'll be my retirement <laughs> show. Thank you. Good night. God bless you. Sex with chocolate. <laughs> yes, Lord. Now Yandy, say- would you do a show for twenty four million? What? Ask me what I wouldn't do for twenty four million. That's a better question. <laughs> okay. Just joking. Just joking. Uh, uh, they're saying y'all at the Dubai Shindy. They say it's invite only and is expected to bring out a swarm of A listeners at the resort, which reportedly includes two hundred and thirty one luxury apartments, six hundred and ninety three hotel rooms, and one hundred and two mm. suites. Brett, how at your boy? Twenty four million, me and what you. you wanna, Ricky and Brett. What you want to do? Let's million. do it. Let's do it. What you want to do? Split it up, Brett. We good. What we doing? Let me know so I can start practicing <laughs> right now. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, Brett, you, you gonna pull million. out some Beyonce moves? Twenty four million. You know I am. Got me looking so crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking Ricky about. gonna do Jay Z part. Let's go. All oh, that. I already know. <laughs> hey, with, with a little bit of genuine in there too. Okay. <laughs> mm, that's a concert. I don't know. I have to go into, honey. I don't know if I'll be at that one. But anyway. Oh, you'll be there front and center. <laughs> right, with, right with his message self so he can come and report one mistake. Uh, and twirling. somebody don't do it, he can come report it. That's going to be his whole talk. Whole conversation. Nothing good. about the, nothing about how good the show was. Girl, Ricky right. misstepped, honey. He was supposed to go left, honey. He went right. I can tell y'all because I don't <laughs> remember that it. audition. Ooh, but anyway, exactly child, what it congratulations be. to her. 24 million. That's a <laughs> sin, honey. All right. The Kahlua today, honey, is one of my favorite Kahlua's. My Kahlua today is paper plate. On the high end, you say paper plate. And on the low end, you say beautiful white. That's your Kahlua today. You get your ass off, off, off the radio and then ran out of colors. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, that's my you must have that's somebody. Little... You must have went to a, a repair, a funeral yesterday and saw that paper plate said, mm, that's a cool little other day. <laughs> uh-uh, I saw that at the high end store. Brad, what you got coming up next in the hot spot? <laughs> coming up next in the hot spot, Stephen A. Smith apologizes. What? Wait till I tell you what happened up next. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Spot. Drop it like it's hot. hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot and, and it's hot. You can catch me at the hot spot.
Hey, Mr. B-R-A-T. All right, Rick, the morning show, 29, 29 minutes after the hour, y'all. How's about this being bought to you? Bye. Listen to the Undressing Room podcast presented by Macy's featuring Eva Marcille and L'Oreal. Log on to theundressingroompod.com for access to their personal Macy's shopping page. The Undressing Room podcast is available wherever you get your podcasts. Brat, good morning. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brett Tat Tat, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it. Oh, Lord. Stephen A. Smith had to apologize to Rihanna after making comments about her upcoming Super Bowl halftime performance next month, y'all. Now, during a Wednesday appearance on Sherry Shepard's Fox uh, daytime talk, talk show, um, Smith had asked, they asked Smith about Rihanna's performance. Now, he responded, Ladies and gentlemen, she's a lot of things. She's spectacular. Actually, and congratulations on new mamahood. But there's one thing she's not. She ain't Beyonce. Ooh. Oh, now nah, come on. Mm. He, yes, continued, he, mm. he continued. Mm. We know she's not Beyonce, Sherry responded. Beyonce performed, but she's had her time. Now it's Rihanna. Steven later apologized on social media, saying that he meant it in no disrespect. He called Rihanna phenomenal and a sister and said she's going to be great during her performance. Ooh, He said, I want Rihanna to know you're a superstar, you're sensational, you're spectacular. You're no joke, and you're a worthy person to be doing the Super Bowl halftime show. Ugh, Ricky. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. We cringe, all like, right? yeah. Ooh, we kind of cringed, right? <laughs> oh man! Yeah. How, how, do y'all, yeah. well, how do y'all think the Super Bowl performance is gonna be? I think it's gonna be awesome. I think she's gonna bring something that it's never had before. I think she's gonna bring some of her Rihanna Fenty, uh, the 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 greenery and the artsy stuff to the show to her performance. That's what I think. But I could I could be wrong. Yeah, she's gonna show think. out. She's gonna show out, man. And, right. and, and back to the Stephen A. situation. It's kind of like. We all love Bruno Mars, right? He's an amazing performer. And if somebody said, hey, Bruno Mars is tight, but he ain't Michael, he ain't Jackson. Michael Jackson. You know what right. I'm saying? So I think he was kind of, uh, I'm hoping. It's still a you shot, know. though. Yeah, but it's still, you know. It's, it's yeah, a- but the reason why he apologized because the audience booed him. I watched uh-huh. it, and I told Sherry about it Ooh. after it was on. I said, Sherry, what in the hell went down? Because she was shocked. And, you know, she had to kind of pedal it back and bring it back to him and let him know that, oh, but but Bri- yeah. yo, let's give Rihanna a chance and she as said, well. now it's Rihanna. I, yeah, you so know. bless his spirit. <laughs> yeah, and you know what, too? For years, there's been this underlying kind of competition in the air between Beyonce and Rihanna. Not between the girls, right. but just the public has seemed to put them not even with each other. And they're on a lot of the same teams, but against each other. So for him to come on this national platform and be so vocal and yep. just out there with it, like, yeah. golly, Steven, yeah. come on with it. And I think Rihanna, I, th- I honestly think Rihanna is going to be completely different from Beyonce, but yeah. kill it. And especially since we haven't seen, besides the Fenty shows, we, we have not seen, seen Rihanna. And so the world is waiting. That's yeah. right. We, she agree. about to bring a whole new baby mama fire. Nice. It's yes. about to be I different. Agree. She's going to be up there thick, too. She got yes. that thick thing. Uh-huh. She's about to thick, bring us a strong thick, 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 thick. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And, and ladies and gentlemen, if y'all, if y'all don't recognize uh, uh, the, 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 vo- the voice just now with a little bit of raspy in it, yes. which I love. Y'all, y'all give it up for my girl, Yandy Smith. In the Yandy. building. Yeah. 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 Hey, Yandy, I apologize. We were supposed to formally introduce you. But once, once we get going, we get to talking and Gary start all that gossiping and stuff. It just throw everything <laughs> off. <laughs> everything. Well, you know, it's y'all family. Gary's fault. It's all Gary's fault. Hey, yeah. Gary, we hey, love yeah. you. Love you, hey, hey, we love <laughs> We love you, and thank you for joining us this morning. You'll be on all morning. So, uh, so everybody, you know, uh, let everybody know how they can follow you. Uh, as well. Well, I keep it pretty simple. All the names I get checks and just Yandy Smith. <laughs> there it is. Right. I know that's right. All right, y'all. Well, we're going to wrap up the hot spot on that note. But coming up next, we got Special K with the news you absolutely positively cannot use. And hit us up for them wake up calls at 8669 Ricky. That's 8669 R I C K E Y. The time now is 27 minutes before the top of the hour. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. You liar! I believe him, yo. I don't know why, but I do. All right, y'all, Rick, about the morning show. And the time right now is 12 before the top of the hour, y'all. It is about that time for Special K. Got news you positively absolutely cannot use. Special K, good morning. 
Yeah, good morning. I tell you what it's about that time for. It's about that time for me to reach out on behalf of all my fellow uh, native uh, Atlanta folks. And I'm reaching out to people all across the country, people that's listening in Cleveland, people that's listening in Buffalo, uh, uh, people that's listening in Dallas, uh, uh, Oklahoma, wherever you're listening, wherever you are listening, I need all you black folks to please, please, Super Dave, give me, give me some appropriate music. I'm reaching out in the most respectful way possible to Jermaine Dupri and Ludacris, whoever else was involved in the creation of this 2002 <laughs> hit, Welcome to Atlanta, <laughs> on behalf of all my fellow AT aliens. Please, I ask y'all to do a 2023 version called Unwelcome to Atlanta. Unwelcome <laughs> to Atlanta. Because like a Baptist church, Rock T, on first Sunday after New Year's, we are full. We are full. Black people <laughs> all over America are still looking at Atlanta as the black mecca where black <laughs> dreams come true. The population of Metro Atlanta right now is about 6,550,000. The fact is, 6,542,000 of them are rappers, want to be rappers, used to be rappers, or want to get pregnant by a rapper, or trying to be a hype man for a rapper, or you're too damn old to be starting out to become a rapper. And, of course, the ones that ain't rappers are producers. And the other 100,000 are strippers. We don't need none of y'all here. We don't need none of y'all here, okay? All you young ladies graduating from these HBCUs around the country, coming to Atlanta, looking to find the man of your dreams. I got news for y'all ladies. The man of your dreams in Atlanta is looking for the man of his dreams. All right? These men don't want you. They want me. It's 37 straight stop? black men that remain in Atlanta. Can you please just stop? And what that means, I got a better chance of getting a man in Atlanta than any of y'all do. And I don't even want one. I don't want one, but I'm just saying. All, listen, all negro rific dreams do not come true in Atlanta. Anybody with a mediocre credit score and two fake pay stubs can no longer qualify for a $700,000 home. If you're living in Detroit with a 480 credit score, it ain't magically jumping up 200 points by moving to Atlanta. All right? Look, there's other cities down south for black people to move to. Move to Jackson, Mississippi. Move to Houston. Move to Fort Lauderdale. Move to Huntsville. Move to Jacksonville. Move to Louisville. Move to Nashville. Move to any place that ends in Bill. Just stay the hell out of Atlanta. Because in Atlanta, it takes four hours to go a mile and a half in traffic. What's How many hours? Four hours. What's <laughs> hour starts at 3.15 in the morning and ends at 11.45 at night. Oh, God. You got a bunch of pale hopping dudes with twists in their hair wearing tight, loose, skinny jeans, white t-shirts, glitter belts, fake Gucci slides, driving Dodge Chargers. That's either robbing you at gas stations with three other dudes, or they're 38 and they live with their mama or their big sister. Oh, You're not going to find the land. <laughs> The streets of Atlanta line with magical entrepreneur success dust. It's not going to happen. What you are going to find is a bunch of dudes that are running bank scams on Instagram, trying to be party promoters, and they own landscaping businesses. You're going to find a bunch of women that sell real estate, do credit repair, fix eyelashes, uh -huh. braid hair in their kitchen, uh -huh. and walk around wearing fuzzy Ugg slippers in the airport and dating dudes that keep their car all day while she at work. And she giving Man. five grand to split oh, when she get her tax return. <laughs> That's not what it is. Stay the hell out of Atlanta. Do not welcome. You are not welcome in Atlanta. <laughs> Can you feel the wall? Because I know somewhere deep down in my heart, I still love you. <laughs> no. regular face. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! That's the homie. Though. No, I can't even look at him. <laughs> Hold it. He's half man, half woman. It's Gary. I want to hip you to the teeth. Mm -mm. It's 
Gary, baby. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Thursday, a beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. Everybody in the world knows, particularly if you're African-American, know y'all, that artists from Motown, y'all, they rarely sit down, honey, and do interviews and, you know, talk about their personal lives. But a lot of people, honey, are digging into that Smokey Robinson. Did y'all hear what he did? The other right. day, Smokey Robinson sat down and did an interview, y'all. And, you know, he talked about all the wonderful music he made and who he did it for. But what people are angry about is he sat down and told the world that he had an affair with Diana Ross. He said, now, he grew up with Ooh. Diana Ross. They was neighbors and friends and him and Aretha Franklin. But he said that he had an affair with Diana Ross when she he was, was married. Yeah, no, I don't like that, honey. <laughs> that I'm is sure dirty. I'm sure everybody on that bus, on them old bus, uh, Greyhound bus tours, with the, I'm sure everybody, I'm, I ain't no telling what kind of party they had back you know, in the 60s. You know, Smokey Robinson was the Drake back in the day. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> yeah, but still, you don't sit there and talk about that woman got children. He was married at the time. He said the relationship went on longer than he wanted to go on. Ooh. And so, but honey, but Miss Ross, honey, he put that woman business out there like Ooh. that. And, and, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Are you in a somewhere like stop in the name of love? Mm-hmm. Just stop it. Just yeah. stop. But yeah, would you want a man or somebody to sit down and tell your business like that? And I mean, you know, this was something that should have been between y'all. Here, Smokey, almost ninety years old, and now he's sitting down and telling that woman he business. Was telling the story, and this Gary. was about sixty years ago. Why are you still talking about? Thank me, you. Sir? Well, Thank he, you. Hey. Mm-hmm. You don't do that. To talk about about Smokey, his, his songs. Well, know? talk about them facelifts he didn't have, honey. He should talk about I that. Don't care that what I think about <laughs> me. Me. Oh, Just stop. yeah. <laughs> What's the name of that song he made? Gang banger. How dare he? <laughs> I wear that, that, that name. And then pull up gang banger. <laughs> talk about that. That's what you need That's to talk the about. We're not talking about that. Uh-huh. So we need something else for us to talk about. Yeah, so honey, go talk about Miss Ross. Don't do that to Miss Ross, honey. That woman, she honey. was his side piece. <laughs> and Miss Ross is a class act. Yes. I want to keep her that way in my head, please. Thank, Thank you. you, Smokey. Look at she that. She was mess. young too back in the day, though, honey. Look what he. Turn up, turn that in, that in. Get it up, Yes, baby. <laughs> talk about gang banging, damn it, Smokey. Don't talk bad, about this, bro. Tell how bad that song was. Ooh, baby, oh, that song Lord. was something. We didn't even know if that was real or not. <laughs> Listen, they, Is that really the- Smokey? That, that's really smart. That's really he smoking. made a song called Game Bang. Somebody put it on Facebook and said he need to fire his producers. <laughs> <laughs> Game Bang is. With all that damn mess. But anyway, child, we're going to pray for Smokey. All right, moving on in other celebrity news, y'all. They said they on again, they off again. They on again, they off again. But now they on again, y'all. Let's congratulate Ray J and his beautiful wife, Princess Love, honey. It's been reported. That they are back together again, y'all. They're saying Ooh, that, honey. If toxic was, <laughs> was a couple. <laughs> they say, honey, he was at her birthday party, and they seem very much so in love, honey. And now they're back together again. And Ray J said, thanks for the birthday love. He said, I'm taking it easy today. Family and few friends going to pull up. He said, I've been at this hotel for two months in Las Vegas on super grind mode, and so on and so forth. But he and Princess Love are back together again. But isn't that something? But love will keep us together, right? If they break right. up again, they better keep it private. Don't nobody want to hear about this no more. Mm. Yeah, but a lot of people saying that she is so dumb. But that woman got kids for that man, and she wants her kids to know they daddy. I guess so. You know, congratulations. Yeah. I to mean, them. they they yeah. um, it's hard to start over. Sometimes you know, if you can work it out, you want to be with somebody that you're comfortable with, a comfortable with around the house uh, or whatever. You know, you kind of go back to what you know. That's that's normal. Yeah, and I yeah. wish him the best because she is definitely beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yep, and she and loves it's crazy. It. Yeah, for sure. When you see them together, they just seem so in love. I mean, they PDA all up and down. He rubbing on her booty. She kissing on his neck. But then the next day, it'll be in today's news. She has yeah. filed. <laughs> right. But it's it's so crazy because they be so in love. And I've I've literally hung out with them and I love them together. So mm-hmm. it's it's Ray J, just 
just stay on the right track. Because I, I yeah. want to I want to say Princess is always on the right track. Ray J, just okay. stay on the right track. I agree That's with all that. I want to yeah. say. They say she's a glutton for punishment. All right, the Kahlua oh. today, huh? There's one of my favorite Kahlua. My Kahlua today, y'all, is paper plate. On the high end, you say paper plate, and on the low end, you say beautiful white. That's your Kahlua for today. Yeah, you ain't putting no damn effort into the Kahlua today. You done ran all the Kahlua's, all them uh, uh-uh. colors they got at Sherman Williams. Uh-uh. Baby, that's all a cute damn beat color. They got, you could have went to Neymar Marcus and looked on some clothes and got some more color pattern. You talking about paper uh-uh. plate. That was the color. I guess tomorrow's going to be red cup. Red <laughs> cup. Paper plate. Red cup. Yeah, Gang he, bang. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all give it up to Gary with the T. All right, John. Ricky Bottom on the show. I got the wake up call. Get at me. 8669. Ricky, here we go. Columbia, Yandy Smith, we love you in Columbia, South Carolina. Hey. Wake up, Aww, wake up, thank wake you. up. Uh, I'm calling from Orlando, Florida. want to wake up my daughter, Kendall Green, in the Renaissance Charter Schools today. Wake up, wake up, wake up. This is Deborah, Deborah from Macon, Georgia. I want to wake up my son, Peyton, to get his <laughs> and go to work. Wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> For your wake up call, 28 minutes after the hour, y'all. Coming up next, man, we're going to be talking to Yandy Smith, the one and only Yandy Smith. Sitting in with us this morning, y'all. Got that. Coming up next, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, y'all. Hey, and ladies and gentlemen, now you've seen her on TV for 15 years in online, uh, uh, I'm talking about like online standing in the snow and rain for civil rights. Uh, uh, and, and I've seen it with my own eyes. Y'all, please welcome. Our guest host this morning, the one and only Yandy Smith. Yandy. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Yandy, hey, Yandy thank I, you so much for joining us today. What up? I'm so excited to be here. I must say, my stomach is hurting because the way y'all cut up, it don't make oh, yeah. no sense. Yeah, we want to we want to apologize. The, the, I want to personally apologize the way... Please. Uh, the, the way Brad K handled me. And, and Special K, the way they oh. act and the way they carry themselves <laughs> on the show. We need to apologize the, for you. Okay? The way that Gary, Gary act and the way he carry himself Yo is just kids. real embarrassing. So just in advance, uh, mm-hmm. I tried to tried to let you know before you, what you was going to be dealing with this morning. And uh, for those of y'all who don't know, when you first started out, you was managing artists like Missy and yeah. LL Cool J. I didn't even know yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, so I started out at Violator Management, which was a huge management office in New York. We had artists like Missy, 50, Busta, LL, Tweet. Remember, y'all remember Bubba Sparks? Yeah. yeah. Noriega, Capone, anybody that was hot, Violator had them. Yep. What? Mm. Yep, 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 yep. I started out as an intern up there, right out of Howard, and um, stayed Wait there minute, for some time. Wait a minute, you're a I'm a bison, yes. Oh, wow. Come on now. Come on. Wait a H- well, you, you know, you know yeah, H- we're full H- of H- H- HBCUs here. You know, uh, Maria, uh, fam, you. Fam, you. Hey. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, I am the, the Alabama State University. Come on now. Hey. And no, I am no. the Mecca Howard University. Thank hey, you. We know. We know. <laughs> yes, you got <laughs> Mecca in that bad boy. <laughs> I, I am the GED recipient. <laughs> yes. 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 Don't include you too, Kay. That's right. So no, no, Andy, how did you get into TV and end up on Love and Hip Hop? Was that through Mona? Because somebody actually, told me that, that show was actually your idea. Yeah, the funny thing is I got a deal from um, VH1. It was a development deal. And originally the show was called Keeping Up With The Joneses. And it was a show that I created with my then client, Jim Jones, and it was about his family and Chris. Yep. 
And shooting that show was not easy. It was so much going on personally with our team. You know, we had this artist, Max B. We had another artist named Stack Bundles, God Bless the Dead. And and Max got arrested. Stax um, had an unfortunate, untimely death. So Jim just felt like it was too cumbersome to have these cameras following him. Mm. And I was like, listen, now, these people done gave me all this money to shoot this show. We ain't quitting. Right. Um, so I called Mona and I was like, Mona, listen, I don't want to lose my deal. What can we do? And at the time she was pitching another show. Um, I, I believe it was about the women of hip hop or something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, we came together. We talked about it. We brought our two deals together and um, we put our two ideas together under my deal. And then Love and Hip Hop was birthed. That's so first up. season, I was a producer on the right. show. And then the next season, we just felt like we needed that woman that kind of got her stripes in this industry, not because she was married to a rapper or dating one or signed to the group, which was male dominated. We wanted a woman that just was not attached to a man in hip hop that really represented hip hop and and, um, kind of fighting her way on the course. Yeah. And you represent that so well. I I love everything that you're doing as a mother an entrepreneur, a community activist. Thank you. Can you just talk about how important it is for you to stay connected and provide opportunities for other people? Yeah. So, you know, I never really came into this business wanting to be a star or wanting to be famous. But when I got the platform, I was like, now, you got these people listening. You better talk about something. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just felt like it was important for me to use my voice in this platform to build up our community. I felt like so many people needed an opportunity. I come from a family of, you know, people that were past drug abusers. I come from a family. I grew up in the projects in New York. And um, there's so many people around me that were talented, that that just needed a big break or needed an opportunity, needed a job. So growing up, I always felt like if I just got that opportunity to help my people, I would. Wow. Um, so I think that's been a lot of the reason why I wanted to really focus on entrepreneurship, so that I can hire people and then also focus on TV and music so that I can give people a platform to change the trajectory of their lives. That's so awesome. Oh, Thank man, that's, you. Hey, that's good. Yanny, we're going to be talking. We're gonna, we, hey, y'all, Yanny Smith is going to be on with us all morning, y'all. So uh, thank right. you so much for being on with us, uh, uh, putting up with our crazy set. We got the chicken and <laughs> waffle mix coming up next. Rick Smiley, the morning show. Uh, Black Tony. 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 Yo, what's up, cuz? I mean, you hey, tell look, me what's up, I, bro. Uh, come on, man. Oh, my bad. My bad, sir. I probably, I meant to call you and tell you I'm probably not going to make it this morning. Because, um, I'm probably not going to make it this morning. Because, um, um, you, see, you know how you ain't know, I know that I like to paint. You know how you ain't know that? <sighs> Yeah. There's so many things you don't know about me that I like to do, sir. Bro, you got about 2,000 you know comments on, on our social media yesterday. Oh, cause I, because I painted some good pictures. Hey, but you know what I like to do, though? Yeah. I love to read, son. Folks don't know that about me. The folks think I'm just dumb. I love to read, though, son. And I just started. Hey, Rocky. Yes, sir. I just started reading. Hey, Maril. I just started reading it. I just started. I, I'm not going to call until I finish this book. Cause I, I just, it's just too good. I can't put it down. What book you read? What, what book you read? I'll be there when I finish it. I'm on page six. <laughs> what book is it, man? The Bible. <laughs> you ain't ever oh, coming. Nice. You ain't ever coming. <laughs> huh? You on page six? <laughs> what, you, you in our Genesis? Yo. <laughs> well, read a song. I mean, huh? Read a song. Shit, in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. Man, that's a that's page one, bro. That's the best. Uh, you said it started at the beginning. I'm finna I'm finna read I'm as soon as I finish reading it, shot, I'll be to work. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be how long you think that's gonna take, Maria? Um, probably like twenty thirty. Years. <laughs> yeah, in twenty thirty. Like Tony Knight. Yeah. God, good luck God, with that, man. God said the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. Number five, <laughs> God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was evening, and then there was morning. Mm. Number six, <laughs> God said, yeah, I'll be there when I finish, y'all. I'll be through. Um, <laughs> I ain't Black Tom. I ain't Black Tom. Have a nice day, man. <laughs> All right, I'll see y'all later when I finish, bro. All right, dog. All right, pray for us. All right. 
He's half man, half woman. It's Gary. I want to hip you to the teeth. Mm-mm, it's Gary, baby. All right, seven minutes after the hour, Gary has a tea and the clue today. What up, Gary? Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, Yandy. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Thursday, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. The prayer warriors are definitely being solicited, Ricky, y'all, for rapper Boosie Badass. They're saying, y'all, that his 21-year-old daughter, Ivanya, also known as Poison Ivy, came out on Instagram. And Black Twitter says that it's definitely karma for Boosie. Now, they're saying in the Instagram photo, Miss Ivanya poses with her lipstick last bit girlfriend. Avanya is a masculine identified lesbian with apparent daddy issues, they're reporting. Now they're saying she's an aspiring rapper, captioned the image endlessly in love with you. Now they're saying that Boosie has several, uh, seven children spread out in multiple households. They say it could be difficult to divide his time between the children and his rap career. And then they went on to say that, you know, that this um, is definitely, y'all, yeah, karma um, for Boosie because, you know, he criticized and made those very bad remarks, honey, to Dwayne Wade about um, his trans daughter, Zaya Wade, honey, when she was 12 years old and stuff. And they were saying among the insulting comments Boosie made um, to Wade, he said, told him not to, you know, cut his private parts off. And he also said out lying physical punishment um, made parents too lenient and gave him two children, gave him children too much power over the parents and stuff and people say this is definitely coming back to Boosie but you know Ricky when I was growing up they used to always say honey when you live in a glass house honey don't throw no stones mm. right. and evidently Boosie threw bricks and now they're mm. saying that it's coming back to him y'all what y'all think about that isn't that sad is, you know, is, is, that, is that a sad look for him well no I mean she looked happy on the picture I saw it I mean she mm-hmm. like she was happy on the picture I don't think there's nothing coming back on him I mean she uh I don't think she's doing trans. She had a dress on on the picture, and then the uh, young other young lady that she was with had on some jeans and a shirt, and they just looked like they just took a pose for a picture. It wasn't nothing, that, uh, you know, nothing alarming. Mm. Yeah. Well, Boosie should talk about people like that, honey. I mean, because you just never know, honey. I know when I was growing up, people used to call me all kind of names, and they forgot they looked to their left, and they had a little boy growing up right there, too. And, honey, don't know what that <laughs> one's going to be. But anyway. <laughs> 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 you just got to def- definitely. You got chased home from school every day, girl. You, I got chased home you, from school and everything. Hell, Brad, yeah. you should have been. You should have been on the morning show when we raced down the hall one day, and I, I didn't know that Gary could run that fast. Gary came and almost almost came in second place. I said, Gary, where you learned how to run like that? He said, Yeah, he's chasing home, <laughs> running for his life. <laughs> Thank you. That's honey. why his legs are so lean. He got them nice lean legs. Yes, <laughs> Lord, baby, honey, they used to chase me home, honey. That was very dirty and mean. Gary honey, can run a hyena, baby, a cheetah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he had them books up to his chest too. You know, he hold his books like, like the boys do. He had them books <laughs> up the chest, Hold them with both arms. <laughs> yeah, had them up, 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 running fast as hell. the windmill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He didn't drop none of that, none of that homework. Baby, that was chest protection, honey, holding my books right up to my chest, baby. But that's all right. Jesus knew, honey. He definitely knew. That's why all he right. got you home safe, Gary. Got me home and safe, honey. Now, nah, baby. Won't he do it? Yes, Amen. he will. All right. Hey. Other celebrity news, y'all. T.J. Holmes and Miss Amy um, Robach, honey, they're preparing to sue ABC. Now, they're saying last month, oh. Good Morning America, third hour coach, T.J. and Miss Amy, honey, were suspended, which we knew all about. It. Now, they're saying insiders are claiming that Amy and T.J. are definitely preparing to sue the network. And they said, honey, that they were spotted here in Atlanta. They were saying hey. they were spotted, yeah, because, you know, I think his wife lives in Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken. And they oh, were spotted, gosh. honey, coming from the airport. So I don't know if he was bringing her to meet his wife officially or what. But they said that, honey, they That's were definitely spotted. And the thing, but they say TJ and Amy, honey, lawyers plan to slap down a lawsuit if ABC decides to fire well, the Good Morning America's co-star. Well, that's, that's a good question. Uh, do they have the right to fire them for having a relationship uh, when they, you know, I don't know what the laws is on that, but I'm sure those lawyers then found some loopholes. Uh, Yandy, what well, are your thoughts? You know. you know, I think there should be a moral code of ethics mm-hmm. in the workplace. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. Now, the question is, should it be a slap on the wrist or should it be impactful in your pay, meaning you're fired? Um, I'm on the fence about it. I kind of feel like business and personal should be separate, but they keep it separate, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I'm on the fence. I really don't know if they should be fired, but I do know that it, it definitely causes some controversy for the network and people might not support as much. And a lot of these jobs, they have a clause where it's an at-will employee, meaning you can be fired at will with no, you know, even in contract, you can be fired at will. And this might be them exercising that right 
to fire them at will because of this disturbance to the workplace. Yeah, Only fired both of them? Look bad. Yes. Both of them. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. Both of them. And, but a lot of people feel it's a race thing, too. And I think race has a play in this as well, with him being an African-American man and her being well, a white got, woman. They got met a, uh, rid of uh, Matt Lauer from uh, the Today, Today Show. Yeah, but, but he, he was, went he was, that's but he he was, was accused no. of um of He was doing violating. something else. He was locking chicks in his room. And, yep. Yeah, oh. he was <laughs> touching people. <laughs> he was touching he was doing the most. He was touching yeah. them. Yeah, so mm-hmm. let's pray, honey, that all parties, you know, this situation get no. real well because he has a daughter and she got some cheering with her husband. And remember I told you the other day they exchanged the dog, so she gave the dog to the husband. So I don't know, it's sad. But you know what? I don't think they're fired yet. I think that it's it's a discussion, it's a conversation that's up in the air about whether they're going to let them come back. They're, I think they might be suspended, suspended or something. Yeah, yeah, but they ain't coming um, back. Oh, okay. They definitely not cause They already made it very clear. They said they will not be back. So mm. that's why they got these lawyers to determine, honey, if they're going to be able to give them a check to live happily ever after or what. Sheesh. So. I wonder if they were laid up and they was like, hey, babe, I think we need to sue. <laughs> yeah, you right, babe. Let's do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Was that like a midnight oh, conversation oh, over some good, tea and biscuits? Got some good friends uh, that's attorneys that know the law real good and know that uh, that they have a, a, a good case. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, that remains to be seen. Yes, it is. Okay. All right, paper plates is the color on the high end. On the Lord, just say beautiful white. That's your color for today. <laughs> They're going to be eating off of paper plates, baby. Paper they get their chance. <laughs> <laughs> give it up to Gary with the tea. Gary! <laughs> Did you see that post? People are talking. Here's what's trending on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, y'all. A recent study shows that uh, a four-day work week actually works now. I mean, a four-day work week actually works. The study showed that having a three-day weekend made workers happier and also proved that uh, the companies, you know, could actually make more money and be more productive with fewer hours. So in today's What's Trending, we want to know what would you do if your job allowed you to take Friday Saturday and Sunday off. Sunday off. Boy, that'll be a woo, wow. Hit us up at 866 Ricky 866 R I C K E Y. How would you spend your extra day off, Yandy? The study looked at 33 companies with employees in six countries who only required their workers to work 32 hours per week. Lord, I wish I had that. The Oof. results were positive. Companies in the program reported increased revenue and happier and healthier workers. The four-day work week allows employees to explore hobbies and spend time with family and loved ones. Now, I know some of y'all don't want no extra time with your kids and your husbands. I'm going to pray for y'all. But, for example, one employee reported having an elderly parent who was terminally ill, and she got to spend three to four days a week with them. And, I mean, that's special because you can't get that time back. Absolutely. So, I agree yeah. with that. Um, our schedules are pretty pretty flexible right now. But, you know, our work hours, we do work crazy, crazy work hours. Now, what would y'all do with an extra day off each week? I mean, I can think of porch. a million things. What would you do, Ricky? S- sit on the porch and tail lies and swat flies. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather have Saturday, porch. Sunday, and Monday. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good with any extra day of the week because you know what? It feels like on the weekends, I'm rushing to get everything done that I wasn't mm-hmm. able to do during the week. So it doesn't even feel like a weekend. It just feels like another day that I'm super busy and super tied up. At least during the week, if I got that one extra day, I could handle like, more like things. The New Year's actually, break, like, like, like after New Year's and then that extra lazy day. Exactly. Yes, yeah, that extra day show do help. <laughs> oh, man. Mm-hmm. Sit down and do nothing. Not nothing. Not nothing. nothing. Yeah, so let y'all hit us up at 866 Ricky 866 rickey Real quick, Gary, what, what would you do with an extra day? You know what, Ricky? When I have an extra, I don't comb my hair. I don't brush mm. my teeth. I don't mm. wash my face. Maria, uh-uh. I don't do nothing. Huh? Oh. Uh-uh, Gary. Uh-uh, Gary. That's no, right. honestly, because let me tell you something. I mean, it's like this is like drag. You got to put your clothes face and brush on. Your teeth. No, because Rick, <laughs> let me tell you, I'm not seeing nobody. And and I it's funny. I'll brush go the whole day. 
Just I don't give around. a damn how many days you have. I'll stop by that too. Yeah. You don't do it. Yeah. 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 Stop by. Stop by. Because, Gary, yes. when you come back to work, you might have a little plaque buildup. We don't want oh, that for your life. Oh, no. I have a good dentist, honey. That but no. <laughs> around. You don't want to get that either. You got some big ass, some big ass teeth. So you need, you need your teeth to be you need all that black building. Right. He like, Maria, but I'm cute. A, yeah, Maria, what would you do with an extra day off? Um, probably it's just something that I, I think that I would enjoy. Like I've always wanted to learn to roller skate really good. Like when I go to the roller Ooh, skating yeah. rink, I see people going backward up, and I think that's so Maria, dope. But I never have time. Please you do. Been told me that. Oh, I want to learn how to skate, like really skate, you know. I, without... I, could t- I could teach you how to slow skate backwards with a nice groove to it. Oh, oh man, Ricky. Oh, That's man. what I want. That's what yeah, I we want. We can make some of them damn videos like on uh, Instagram. Boy, I can teach yes. you how to go. We, go, yeah. we still go skating on Sundays. Come on now. Yeah, that ain't yeah. even said nothing but a thing. I be you looking buy crazy. You, you got to take an extra pair of socks and bring your own. We got to buy you your own skates. You don't rent skates. Don't rent them down. Oh, tag me in. I want to come. Yeah. I'm serious. Like, I'll show y'all how to skate now. If I can't do a damn thing else, I love to roller skate. Rock T, an extra day off look like for you. Man, I'll probably do some yard work or looking for something I'm trying to fix. You know, like, you know, I, you know I think I'm a little handyman, so I, I, I just enjoy that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, dog. Special K, a day off? Mm. I probably just read. Uh, Read good books, study the word. Uh, Eight six six nine. Good morning. Who's this? Um, since I am a single mom, I would definitely use that day to do some me time because I don't hardly get to just take some time for myself. So I would definitely go to the spa, read my books that I'm behind on, uh, catch up on some wax things and stuff like that. So it would definitely be about me because I never have no time for me. It's always about the kids. Well, this is Greg from Fort Lauderdale, and I have to say, I don't get to spend a lot of time with my wife, so if I had an extra day off, I would make that day just about her taking her out and, you know, showing her a good time and spending some quality time with her. She deserves it. Good morning. My name is Charlotte. I'm calling from St. Louis, and if my job gave me an extra day off, I'm going to try my best to sleep in after 9 o'clock. I'm up every morning at 5.40, and I'm tired. Yo, this is real. I'm calling from North Carolina. I sort out all my side chicks and try to pick out which one I might want to marry in 2022. Oh, my God. Well, from Oklahoma City, I would, for three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, have Ricky come back and do a personal show because he just left Oklahoma. So that's my request if I was off for three days. Okay. Hey, let me let me tell you something. Uh, uh, Kay, let me tell you something. Yeah. Oklahoma City was came out. It was absolutely packed. And our, that audience was wonderful. Oklahoma City wonderful. is always good, and Tulsa Man, is always good. I swear, anytime you go to Oklahoma City, it's just yeah, always a, 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 a blast. Man, the Bros was there. Man, it was uh, Delta Sigma Theta Founders Day. Man, big shout out to y'all. Hey, hey, shout out to you, Mr. Perry, for putting us on all your radio stations. Uh, we love you, and uh, we love Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plains. Where the waving wheat, it sure smells sweet when the wind comes right behind the rain. <laughs> okay. All right, dog. Let them know, man. <laughs> you know, you know, you know that was my, my high school recital, so every time I always sing that Oklahoma song. All right, y'all. Uh, if y'all could not get through, hit us up at Ricky Smiley Official, uh, Ricky Smiley uh, Morning Show website. One of them, TikTok. I don't give a damn. He could be on my station. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rick's about the morning show. It is Jeff Johnson joining us this morning. Uh, Jeff Johnson, we got a special guest, Yandy Smith, sitting in with us this morning. Say say hello. Hey, good morning, sis. How are you? You guys, excuse me, Rick, man. <clears throat> I, I literally lost my voice at the uh, inauguration of Westmore yesterday. Oh, but my I wanna, God. I wanna, man, it was fantastic. Uh, just absolutely fantastic. But but let me, let, me, let me get into these three things. One, just this morning... Um, former President Trump talked about he's going to give a, and I quote, big political speech. Um, I, I've, nev- I've never heard anybody that is given a political speech call it a big political speech, but we know how the former president is. Um, I think what, what this is really about is there have been people that have accused him of not campaigning <clears throat> enough since announcing in November that he was right. going to potentially run. And 
you know, there, there's a, a, a rift growing, I think, between how Republicans view his electability versus DeSantis uh, and people who had traditionally been strong supporters or supporters of President Trump not supporting him at all. So it'll be interesting to see how he approaches this. What I also think is interesting, Rick, is a lot of people forget when he first ran for president, he almost had to spend no money because he just kept saying such outlandish stuff um, and using Twitter that it almost shifted how anybody had ever run for president before. Um, And while he raised money, he didn't have to spend a lot of money. It's going to be different this go round. And right. It, his ability to raise money in this cycle, um, I don't think it's going to be e- as easy as it was for him before, um, which is really going to threaten, I think, how successful um, his announcement and ultimate campaign even becomes. Second thing I want to talk about is there's an in- there's incredible uh, two cases that the Supreme Court is hearing this week that is going to look really seriously at how um, online freedom of speech is looked at. And so heretofore, you know, Twitter, Facebook um, can determine what they will put on there and what they won't, but they won't always be held accountable for what's said on on the site. Um, These two cases, Rick, can potentially, I mean, I I don't want to go as far to say just put some of these – companies out of business, but it's seriously going to threaten um, a level of legal litigation that they have not had to deal with before. Um, and so these right. are two huge cases that the Supreme Court is going to hear that will that will potentially change online free speech um, and, and who's ultimately responsible for it. Last thing, Rick, before I get out of here is the, the Daily Show in losing Trevor Noah um, is is in a position where political satire, in particular, um, is going to change. And many of you know that they're going through this process of having guest hosts. Uh, Leslie Jones started first, and there's going to be several others. Um, but, but what I really loved, Rick, when Trevor Noah took over was that he wasn't a household name. Um, a ton of people didn't really know him. Um, There are people, obviously, that were deeply rooted in uh, comedic uh, satire and politics knew who he was. Um, But but the the lineup that they have, and some of them are great. You got Leslie Jones, you got Wanda Sykes, you got D.L. Hughley, um, who are going to be having guest host spots, are really established folks. And and Rick, I'm just curious, um, because one, I know you love politics, too. Um, yeah. you, you know everything about comedy. Um, who would you love to see hosting hosting the Daily Show? And what do you think the right approach is? Because, like, we, you can go hardcore with some of those big greats. Um, but there's something to be said, too, for, for finding a diamond in the rough, especially when it comes to cutting-edge political satire. Yeah, now, now, Jeff, I'm going to be a little biased because uh, one of my mentees is on that show, Roy Wood Jr., uh, that's from Birmingham. Yeah. But, but, but when you're talking politics, uh, somebody that's going to uh, challenge uh, the right and, and challenge white supremacy and racism mixed with funny, you know, you got D.O. Hughley, you got Special K that, that's sitting here uh, on, on this show, and there's a, uh, a few comedians uh, with some really, really strong and awesome political views mixed yeah. with funny and can do sketches and, and different things uh, like uh, the uh, Trevor Noah uh, or whatever that would, that would be, be great for the show. But uh, yeah, I was pulling so, for Roy Wood myself. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm pulling for Roy Wood, but I just, the, the, I don't want to lose that uh, political because uh, what's the host before Trevor Noah, uh, John, John Stewart, John Stewart. Yeah. They, they, they really had strong, political views and they stood with people like uh black lives matter and they they called out racism and and stuff like that i love the comedy or whatever uh but if roy wood jr like had some those political views and would take it to take it to them uh, take it to the right like they did and you know that roy wood jr definitely uh deserve it you know his dad uh was a political activist 
a uh, member of Alpha Phi Alpha. Roy Wood Jr. dad was, is your frat brother, Jeff, and he was yeah. awesome on the radio back in the day when I was a kid. So, you know, my vote would definitely be between those two. I don't think Roy can't do the politics. Um, but he, but he's also said he's not even sure he would want to do it if he was offered it. Really? He said he would. Oh, yeah. He's on Roy the better take that damn that. job so he can put me in special K home. <laughs> no, that's right. I'll go in there no, and replace he, his, he his, his, that, him in the writer's room. <laughs> Now, he said he would consider it, but but he hadn't really even thought about it yet. So, I mean, you know, I don't I don't know if if that's just you know positioning as he's looking strategically at it, but but that's definitely what he's on record to say. But but it's just such it's an important show. Um, one, I'm glad that they're looking at people of color um, and not just just trying to go back in a different well, direction. Yeah, just, um, I mean, anybody, Jeff, just as long as it's not George Wallace, uh, big face ass. Uh, uh, you oh know. Lord, <laughs> yeah, I don't like George Wallace. Well, plus George is 213 <laughs> years old, so <laughs> there's that. Let me get out of here, y'all. Hit me, hit me up, Jeff. <laughs> y'all going to hell. You know I ain't lying, Jeff. How old is he? How old is he? 213 <laughs> years old, George Wallace. Picture Jesus. Picture Jesus. Twan 360. All right, y'all, Rick's Mountain Show. It is about that time for Fix It Jesus with Twan 360. Twan, good morning. Ricky, good morning, good morning, good morning. Are you familiar with the 97-year-old internet star, Holla, who recently passed away, Ricky? Holla, yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Grandma oh, Holla. Grandma Holla. Well, her daughter, uh, I'm sorry, her granddaughter is facing backlash after creating a GoFundMe account, originally asking for $10,000 to assist with her funeral expenses. Now, the GoFundMe has raised over $40,000 causing online users, including chef and social media influencer Darius Cooks, to call out Holla's family for scamming and not having the Gangsta Granny's affairs in order, knowing that she's terminally ill. Well, the granddaughter this morning is addressing Mr. Cooks head on. Take a listen. Okay, Darius Cooks, baby. Since we going there, let's do this. Okay? You got a lot of nerve. You one of the biggest, sweetest scammers out here. You and your pots and your <laughs> ass cooking. That don't look like nothing to me. You sitting up counting my coins, you worry about how you scamming people. I'm trying to raise money from my grandmother's home going. What was you trying to do? Get your surgery? Find you something else to do. Fix oh, it. Man. Jesus. Well, wow. it's real, Ricky. Darius, he's responding, claiming he had no idea that the family was mad with him. And despite them having over $40,000 in this GoFundMe, Mr. Cook says that he will pay for Holla's funeral. Take a listen to this. I didn't even know you was upset with me. Fine. Be upset with me. But what you should have did was you should have made sure there were some insurance plans for Grandma Holla. What you should have did. Now, the Lord put it on my heart. To pay for the funeral. I don't even know this lady and don't know y'all. And I said this prior to knowing you were mad at me. So I tell you what, I would love to pay for Grandma Holla's funeral out of my own pocket. But I'm giving my credit card number to the funeral home. (laughs) (laughs) I know that's right. right. (laughs) That's exactly what you do. If you're going to help out with the funeral, go ahead and give the credit card information to the directly to the funeral home. Or whatever, and and pay what you, for, for what you're gonna pay. That the boy, that's woo. Boy, yes. yes. <laughs> fix it, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so she passed away. How many days uh, it's been? She passed away on January 14th after a long battle with uh, uh, breast cancer. A long battle with breast cancer. And she was how old? 97 years old. Man, 90, And mm. when is the funeral? The funeral is set for January 28th in East St. Louis, Illinois. Okay, and uh, and and let's run that first clip again. But her family was saying what now? Okay, Darius Cooks, baby. Since we going there, let's do this. Okay? You got a lot of nerve. You one of the biggest, sweetest scammers out here. You and your pots and your ass cooking. That don't look like nothing to me. You sitting up counting my coins, you worry about how you scamming people. I'm trying to raise money from my grandmother's home going. What was you trying to do? Get your surgery? Find you something else to do. All right, so so tomorrow on the show, we will be interviewing the pots uh, uh, because uh, I just got some text messages that the pots feel like they, they don't feel like they part of the scam and they don't have nothing to do with this and how they got caught up in the middle. So, uh, Swan, do you think we can get the pots on the phone for the I'm next gonna, Fix of Jesus? I'm working on that as we speak, Ricky, the pots. I'm working on it. <laughs>
That is, how can you be following to see these videos? Follow me on all your social outlets at Twan360. There it is, y'all. More Ricky Smiley Morning Show coming up. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's my morning show. Hey, we got the one and only uh, uh, sitting in with us this morning, y'all, from Love and Hip Hop, Yandy Smith. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we want to apologize for the way we acted this morning. Apologize for uh, Brad and Gary. On no, we don't, girl. Yes, Get used to it. This yeah. is what we do. We apologize on Ricky's behalf because his name is on it's his show. No, 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 no. I, I mean, no one has apologized to me for a special case attack, but um, you know I'm, I'm just not gonna... an attack. That was um, that wasn't directed at you. Okay. That was directed at everybody else that came from somewhere else. Okay, with wow. the exception of you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Now, now I feel better. Well, I'm from we Chicago. can move. Oh, well, you've been here long enough. You 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 get grandfathered in. Bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm honorary. Plus, you tend to the unofficial mayor of Atlanta, so. Okay. <laughs> right. And, uh, and, and Yandy, we are just excited about everything. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, love and hip hop and all of the artists that you have uh, managed over the years. And you've taken uh, entrepreneurship to the next level. You recently started a skincare line and yes. a restaurant. So, how's that been going? Oh, it's been awesome. We actually started the skincare line four years ago, but we opened up a store last year at the Underground Atlanta. So that's been awesome. And then we also, right next door, opened up a restaurant called Dance and Crave. You know, we're trying to own the block out here. Right. Love that. Right. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So make sure if you guys come to Atlanta, you come check me out. What kind of now, food y'all sell at yeah, uh, Crave to Dance? Yeah. Dance and crepe. <laughs> everything. <laughs> we sell everything. We are a crepery, so we have sweet and savory crepe. So we have a Philly cheesesteak crepe. We have a seafood crepe that has lump crab meat, lump lobster meat, Ooh. and shrimp. Um, and then we also have sweet crepe, like our strawberry cheesecake crepe. We have our banana walnut crepe. But then, of course, we have Atlanta favorites, like we have lamb chops. Our seafood egg rolls are amazing. We got our lobster shrimp tower. We, we're very sexy over at Dancing Crepe. So you got to make sure you go. come over. I know, I'm Ricky, but, hungry, but it, it, and it is safe. We don't need police protection, right? No, Amen. it's very safe, and I make okay. sure that everyone is secure um, for sure. You asked that question. I can't believe you asked that <laughs> Well, I need to know because, Ricky, and I remember the underground was a great place years ago, and then, you know, it changed your nice back. So I want to be sure, honey, because I can't be going out there, honey, and the girls pop me. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You will not be getting popped. Okay. No, no. Come to Open Mic this Friday. It's going to be so much fun. Please. Okay. Yes. And I'm going to put the mic right in your face. All right. <laughs> now, how do you balance between, uh, you know, balance between, you know, being a working mom, <laughs> you know, television, you know, television, filming, being a mom, like, Cause every time I look, I, I watch you on Instagram, like you so busy, you ripping and running, be, uh, in a, a great mom with by the way. Rally, Tamika Mallory, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You're doing yeah. everything. So to be honest, I, I really haven't figured out a balance, right? I think it's a common myth that there ever really is a balance. I think you just have to figure out how to prioritize. And that's what I've learned how to do by writing everything down and, and making sure that I don't allow myself to fall into that mommy guilt thing. So, you know, I have to some days baby get 80 percent of mommy's time. Then other days babies have to get 20 percent of mommy's time. But the hardest thing for me is managing that mommy guilt and not feeling like I'm a horrible mom. Mm. That that's the hardest part about, you know, being multifaceted in business and a mom just yeah. being OK with knowing I have to separate my schedules in, in order to make a better life for the babies. Wow, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, and keeping your kids grounded and all that stuff. Uh, are any of your kids into entertaining or, you know, or you just want It's so just... funny. So my kids um, joined this performing arts school called AGI. 
It's amazing. Um, and they had a big showcase this past weekend. So my daughter, Skylar, did a monologue. Um, my son, Little Mendisi, he was um, acting. He was awesome as well. Then my little, my, my baby son, Amir, he was dancing. He had a whole dance routine. Right. So, I mean, I don't know if they'll be in entertainment, but I'm going to give them all the legs and opportunities to do whatever they decide. So... They're in performing arts school. Well, we we happy for you. Let everybody know that's listening right now. How can they follow you on social media? Please follow me on social media. I keep things simple for everybody. The name I get checks in is just at Yandy Smith on Instagram, on Facebook, TikTok, everything. Yandy Smith. That's and you it. can see how busy she is because you be posting every time I go I, to Instagram. Your videos <laughs> between you, uh, Candy, uh, Brad, and Judy, boy, y'all be on it, y'all. <laughs> Up and down the timeline, and uh, so uh, we we happy to have you this morning, and uh, thank you for sitting in with us all morning. Um, so, w- ladies and gentlemen, one more time for Yandy Smith. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's been fun. Yeah, front page coming up next. Ricky Smiley the Morning Show. News headlines, entertainment, sports. It's the front page on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, y'all gonna have to change that eight ball to MJG. I done jumped up and punched Gary in the chest. Oh, no. For real. That's why <laughs> sorry I'm about that, Gary. Floor. Hell, got me laying here on my floor. Mm-mm. I'm so sorry, Gary. That damn eight ball MJG busted him in the head. Slap a hoe. You a Yes. Trick. <laughs> you don't want drama. Oh, you. Boy, that's not yeah. happy, boy. It y'all can't. It, it amp us up in here, boy. But day, <laughs> you can, day, day. y'all got to stop playing that eight ball MJG, man. Don't do that to us. Oh, my God. You have to calm down. This segment is being bought to you by. Make sure you catch I Hate the Homies podcast with your boy Rock Teasy, Super Dave, and my man Griff for laughs and sports with the homies and the Amanda Seals daily podcast cultural download everywhere you listen to your podcast, urbanonepodcast.com. All right, Maria, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, RSMS family. Here's your Thursday morning news. The countdown to economic catastrophe has officially begun. The U.S. will hit its debt ceiling today, though Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said she'll implement extraordinary measures to keep the government from defaulting on its debt until probably early June. Stocks tanked yesterday with the Dow plunging, the S&P having its worst day since mid-December, and the Nasdaq coming down from a seven-day rally. In other news, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has asked the state legislature to permanently impose penalties on companies that require their employees to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, if the ban is extended, Florida will be the only state to threaten businesses with fines if they require their employees to get inoculated. DeSantis also wants a permanent ban on mask requirements in schools and government offices. Shifting to jobs, Ricky, Microsoft is laying off 10,000 employees due to growing uncertainties about the state of the global economy. Amazon, Facebook, and Salesforce are also among other tech companies reducing their workforces. Lastly, and congratulations, another Guinness World Record has been set. An Australian woman has broken the Guinness World Record for archery using only the feet. Shannon Jones, who is a contortionist, shot an arrow 59 feet and 11 inches into a target while standing on her hands and using her feet. Okay, wait, wow. strong toes, man. Yeah. What? Sheesh. I don't know where that skill going to come in handy yet. I'm 59 <laughs> feet is pretty far only using your toes. So, mm, yeah, she did that. What? Read more on these stories and other headlines at rickysmileymorningshow.com. I'm Maria Moore, and that's a quick look at news. Rock T, what's going on in sports? Let's start off with former NFL wide receiver <laughs> Antonio Brown. Snapchat account posted a picture of his ex, Chelsea Kyrus, uh, performing the business on him in bed. Antonio no. claiming that his account was hacked. His Snapchat account has been suspended as they continue to investigate. Now, he says yeah. they was hacked, but mm. according How to How did his... he end up on Snapchat in the first place for it to be hacked? Hey, man. Mm. Antonio Brown is the worst liar Antonio in the world. Brown, man. <laughs> Come on, bro. Get your life together, wow. bro. All right, man. Uh, defensive back DeMar Hamlin is making his huge strides in his road to recovery. He is now... Back at Buffalo Bills practice facilities almost daily now. He ain't practicing. He probably, in my opinion, he's probably not ever going to play football again. But at least he's back around the environment and back around his boys. See if he's going to be on the sideline this week when they play. Uh, Dallas Cowboys signed a new kicker, Tristan 
Biscay, uh, Biscayno, man, they to the team. They a kicker with no damn legs and kick no <laughs> damn on, field man. goals. Uh, and, and this, man, that's crazy. Yeah, but I knew this was going to happen, man. If y'all been up, been up under dog on rock, he, they added him just for insurance purposes. Their current kicker, Brett Maher, he missed four extra points in Monday night's wild card playoff game versus the Bucks. He missed another extra point in the last game of the, play, of the regular season. So he's still going to be the main kicker. But if he missed another one, they bringing this dude in just kind of for insurance to take his place because Jerry. They do not need to give him another chance, man. Move on. The dude can't kick. I mean, he's one of the best kickers in the league, actually. He How the got, hell he the best kicker? You missed four field goals. Right. He just got a, he got a mental he, he got a mental breakdown. Man, he's going I don't down. care what he got, man. Everybody else on the team, you got one job. You kick, got one job. Yeah, you got one ball. job. Right. Kick the damn ball yeah. through the pole. I'm with you. you got one That's job. It. Go home. He wouldn't even have the job if it wasn't for the Cowboys winning that game last week. I tell you that right now. So it is what it is. Last but not least, it's official. Break dancing will debut as a sport. At the 2024 Olympics in Paris, man, it's Uh-oh. going down. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm down for this. Yes. I'm yeah. down for this. Yeah, that. It should have been a sport. Shoot, now we got to get mm-hmm. stepping as a sport. Step needs to be a sport as well, and we're working on Ooh. that with Stomp Wars. Stay tuned for that, baby. It's going oh, down. That would be. It. That would be. What, what, what the other one you said is going to be a sport now? Uh, break dancing is an official sport oh, yeah. in the Olympics. It's oh, going yeah. to be. Wow. Yeah. Long overdue. Long overdue. That's my question. You know, you know, I need to be a sport. These nuts. <laughs> hey, 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 Rock. <laughs> what, man? Hey, yeah, Gar- hey, Gary, what that yes. thing called? What y'all be doing? The death drop. Y'all the need death to death drop. Exactly. <laughs> Honey, let hey, these Brett. boys bend. Yes. <laughs> Brett, and that pose. death drop. <laughs> Say what, Brett? And pose. <laughs> That's right, honey. Yeah, so many need- concussions coming from that. Uh-uh. What, from the death drop? Yes, they be banging they them backs and heads to the ground. Child. They don't That's true. <laughs> That's Boy, true. Boy, God. Yeah, I'm like, Gary, y'all, I don't see how y'all do it. Gary, but y'all retired. Be killing. Gary retired from the yeah, death drop. No, I'm getting back in the game, honey. I'm working out right now. Man, you know them legs yes, don't go. Gary. <laughs> you know them legs don't go back like that no more. <laughs> They no longer recline. Drop it like it's hard. Drop it like it's hard. Oh, yeah. my God. They not reclining no more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gary. Yeah, Gary. Gary. Yes. Gary is over them legs. Them legs don't go back. You done, you done, got, you done hit 50. Yeah. <laughs> they need air. They go they halfway. Just <laughs> they go halfway, baby. Yeah, Gary. Well, don't nobody want to make love with you with that CPAP, that CPAP on there. <laughs> No, I put a towel it. over it. That's a shout out to Gary and Booty Eating James. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Right, T, this thing was being yeah. bought to you by what? The Capital One Quick Silver card earned 1.5% cash back on every purchase. What's in your wallet? Details at CapitalOne.com. Bring it to tap. What's had? <gasps> that tower is like a garage door. You open it, and back it over. E. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so early in the morning. Sheesh. Say what, Brett? Say what, Brett? That wasn't me. Uh, <laughs> the meow, 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 baby. Who are we doing it for, Rick? Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Brad, do your story. I'm trying, Gary. I'm trying. Be eating James. <laughs> oh, That's my God. Or Booty E. James. Booty E. James. <laughs> Bought to you, you by. Bought to you by. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right. Bows in Japan. Now. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> <size. laughs> Let's okay. move along. Pick on the hot spot. Today, the okay. Songwriters Hall of Fame announced yes, the 2023 inductees <laughs> at the 52nd Annual Induction and Awards Gala. Uh, the list includes R&B jazz artist Sade, the legendary Teddy Riley, and iconic rapper Snoop Dogg. According to reports, Snoop Dogg is making history as the fifth hip-hop artist <laughs> inducted. Shut up, okay? <laughs> Jay-Z, Jermaine Dupri, Missy Elliott, and the Neptunes, Pharrell Williams, and Chad Hugo were previously welcomed into the prestigious club. It's safe to say that Snoop Dogg is excited about his latest accomplishment. Uh, he shared multiple posts expressing how honored he is to be inducted into the uh, Songwriters Hall of Fame. And in the video he shared in his account, he also mentions his dream of collaborating with fellow inductee Sade. He said, and just to think, I've been telling people for the past seven years when asked, who I want to do a song with, and he said, I always say Sade. And now we're going into the Songwriters Hall of Fame on the same day. Man. 
Ricky, one more again. <laughs> oh Lord! We gonna wrap up what, the hot spot on that. Uh, no, what? this is the stinky uh, section. Uh, you know what, Coming uh, up next is the price mix. Keep going, keep going, Brad. Keep Brett. going, Brad. Yes. Brett. yes. Twenty six so, minutes before the top of the hour, Brett. it's the Ricky yeah. Smiley Morning yeah. Show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so good. <laughs> Y'all so stank.